Recording in progress. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are San Gabriel Unified School District and we are very excited to speak to you today about our Universal Transition Kindergarten. Before we begin and I hand us off to our wonderful superintendent, um, I am gonna just have our community liaisons um, kind of just talk us through um, how to enter our rooms so that we can uh, all be a community and, and understand what all this is about. So without further ado, if I could please hear from Winnie Wang, our Mandarin interpreter. Uh,各位家长们晚上好,感谢您有今天参加学区的这个信息会。那我是今天的普通话中文翻译,呃,Winnie Thank you so much. Yolanda Palom, please. Hola familias, buenas noches, encantada de estar aquí y en esta importante reunión informativa para conocer cómo pueden nuestros estudiantes más pequeñitos entrar a la escuela. Y ahora si quieren oír la eh, presentación en español, pues los animo a que vayan a la burbujita donde pone es Spanish, hagan clic ahí en OK y nos vemos en español. Gracias, hasta ahorita. Wonderful. And if I could please hear from our Vietnamese uh, interpreter, uh, Hai Lam, Pham, sorry. Uh, xin chào, tôi tên là Hải Phạm, kết nối viên cộng đồng tiếng Việt. Uh, nếu quý vị cần hỗ trợ uh, bằng tiếng Việt thì có thể liên lạc với, với tôi. Hoặc là nếu trong quá trình giới thiệu về buổi của họp của ngày hôm nay, nếu quý vị có câu hỏi nào, có thể đặt câu hỏi bằng tiếng Việt trong phần chat. À, để nghe ngôn được ngôn ngữ bằng tiếng Việt ở góc hoàn hình bên bên phải có hình quả cầu là ngôn ngữ tiếng Pháp. Quý vị có thể chọn vô ngôn ngữ tiếng Pháp để nghe được phần tiếng Việt. Xin cảm ơn. Thank you. Wonderful. And last but certainly not least, I have Mandy. Where are you, Mandy? Mandy. Mandy. Wonderful. All right. If I could please introduce our superintendent, Mr. Jim Simmons. Well, thank you, Heather, and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you to this distinguished panel that's joining me this evening. Um, and like I've said from the beginning of this, this journey, uh, we have some of the best minds uh, in the business working on building our new transitional kindergarten program. And that's why we're here this evening to present information to all of you about this exciting new program that we're bringing to the district. I am just thrilled about giving our youngest students the opportunity, the head start uh, to begin their academic career uh, in our district. And so I'd like to introduce our panelists. And first, if you've been hearing from Heather walpart Garan, she is our coordinator of 21st century learning and professional development and just about everything else on the list. Um, we also have uh, Gail Calhoun there. Uh, good evening, Gail. She is our director of state and federal programs and our um, induction uh, program administrator. Good evening, Gail. Hi, Jim. Thanks so much. Glad to be here tonight. And next we have Ruth Eslin, our director of student services and assessment. Good evening, Ruth. Good evening, Jim. Thank you for being here, everyone. And our amazing principal from Roosevelt Elementary, Cheryl Wilson. Good evening, Cheryl. Good evening, everyone. I'm glad you could join us tonight. Another amazing principal from Washington Elementary, Mrs. Sandra Alley. Good evening, Sandra. Hello, everybody. Welcome. So glad everybody is here tonight. And next, we have brought in a true expert on transitional kindergarten, and I'm really excited about her joining us on this journey. Uh, she has so much experience in consulting districts, being a director at the county, 
Um, and she brings that wealth of experience to our district. And that is Mrs. Sheila Arnold. Good evening, Sheila. Good evening. It's so good to be with all of you tonight. Thank you for joining us. Next, we have our Director of Special Education, Aaron Ortiz. Good evening, Aaron. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm happy to be here with you tonight. Thank you, Aaron. Next, we have our Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Mr. Ross Perry. Good evening, Ross. Good evening. It's good to see you all. Thank you. And then we have um, from our Options Surround Care, uh, Nyland. And I'm sorry, Nyland, I don't have your last name on there. <laughs> That's okay. It's Nyland. Hi. Thank you for having, having us. Thank Happy you so much. Here. And Maria Santos also is uh, from Options Surround Care. And good evening, Maria. Good evening, excited to be here. Thank you for joining us. And also Rosemary, and Rosemary, I'm sorry, I don't have your last name either. It's Ola Chea Hisla, and Rosemary is just fine. <laughs> okay. Thank you for joining us, Rosemary. I think I, oh, I see Yvonne. Contreras, our Wilson principal. Good evening, Yvonne. Good evening, everybody. Good to uh, see the panel and welcome families. And Mr. Steve Fang, our principal from Coolidge Elementary. Good evening, Steve. Good evening, Jim. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, these are some amazing individuals that have already been working on this for the past few months. And I am just so impressed by the work that has gone into this so far. We are way ahead of the curve in comparison with other districts, with our planning and preparation in building the model transitional kindergarten program in the San Gabriel Unified School District. So with no further ado, I will turn it over to our panelists here to guide us through this evening. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Jim. So yeah, so we're going to kind of move forward. The plan tonight is to kind of talk your ear off a little bit for about 20 to 30 minutes. And then we're going to open it up to Q&A for our panelists to answer questions. But you are welcome to send us um, questions through the Q&A, as well as um, if you'd like to send it through the chat, uh, you're welcome to do so. But other attendees won't be seeing uh, the chat tonight. So uh, as, let us continue so that we we can get to answering your questions as well. Well, so it is really, really exciting that we are here uh, talking about universal transitional kindergarten, which means it's going to be in all of our elementary school sites. Um, TK is part of the K-12 school system. We're just extending it to help those kiddos out. Kindergarten, in fact, is a two-year program in California. TK is that first year. And so to be able to offer that to students really gives them that leg up. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. The purpose of TK is to really give that children, the children, the gift of time to grow, to develop, to be ready for kindergarten and belong uh, and beyond, to talk to students, to, to peers, to make those friends and those connections, not just um, with each other, but with teachers and what it feels like to be working with teachers. Um, UTK will gradually be available to every four-year-old in the state of California, and we in San Gabriel are actually going to be, um, uh, we're going to be talking a little more about this, but we are going to be uh, opening our doors to many students next year, and we're really hoping that your student will be one of them. Okay. Um, the program itself will be whole child focused. That is, we aren't just focusing on one element of a kid. We want to develop a great kid, this wonderful student that is going to start to launch their career with us in San Gabriel Unified. We're going to be working um, with our teachers on universal design for learning, which really helps to develop 
activities and lessons and and um, and everything with the with the mindset of equity. What's what's going to be effective for all students? We're going to surround those students in a multi-tiered system of support, behaviorally, social, emotionally, and academically. And in terms of academics, we're really going to be focused on purposeful play-based learning because we know that those kids learn well when they are playing intentionally and with guidance. And of course, we are going to be, um, of course, uh, uh, leading the way with social emotional learning at the heart of everything that we do. Now, some of you that are here um, might just say to yourself, I don't want to sit here for 20 minutes, Heather, just get to the, to the root of the matter. Just tell me how do I enroll my kid because I want my kid here in San Gabriel immediately. So I'm just going to spend a quick second telling you a couple of ways that you can register and enroll your student for TK. But later on in this presentation, we're actually going to give you a tour to show you where on the website you can go, all right? So some of you uh, might need just a little, you, you don't need that kind of guidance. You might instead just need to know how to get there. So I'm gonna take the link that's on the slide right now. I'm just gonna drop that in the chat in case that's um, all you really need. If I can do that, I think I can. Um, there is another way that your child can join us as well. Um, and start their journey uh, to become a portrait of a graduate. I'm gonna speak a little bit to that in just a second. There is actually um, some an enrollment timeline that you might wanna be aware of. And this gives you a little more details. If your student, and I'm gonna uh, lean on my panelists for just a little bit here. If, if your student has a birthday between September 2nd and February 2nd, you can enroll, you, you are kind of regular TK. I'm sure that they are wonderful students, so not regular at all, but regular TK and they can enroll there. However, um, if they are what is considered young TK, February 3rd to June 30th, they're gonna use the following link and they can enroll there. We're gonna speak a little bit to this um, in just a little bit, but again, if you're in a rush, and you just want to know how to enroll, here's the information for you. But we're going to speak a little bit to the uniqueness of this young TK program shortly. So just a little bit of patience and we're going to get to those details. All right, let's see. Now I would like to introduce us to, I'm sorry, I did put that up. That's what I was referring to as a little timeline here for you. And I'll let you just look at that. But I'd like to introduce you now to Sheila Arnold. I know that Jim gave you a, gave her a wonderful introduction, um, but I want to go into a little more detail because she's really a wonderful ally for our district to have. She was an early education coordinator with the Orange County Department of Ed. Um, she recently retired after 20 years, and she has coordinated the Orange County Child Care uh, as a TK coordinator and the California Preschool Instructional Network for Orange, San Diego, and Imperial County. Sheila will be providing support to the district for the development and implementation of AB 130 Universal Transitional Kindergarten for four-year-olds. Take it away, Sheila. All right. Thank you, Heather. Thank you very much. So we, we think about, well, what is the value in transitional kindergarten? Why is it that we're having it in the first place? And if we go way back, uh, years back actually now, we just knew that there were some um, children that were entering kindergarten and they were quite young and really just not ready. Not that there was anything wrong at all. It was just the timing more than anything. We had uh, probably... In the United States, we had one of the cutoff dates that really was sort of the, it, it led us to have the younger children. And so we needed to make an adjustment um, and so forth. And so now we have seen that happen in the last few years, uh, giving young children really more time, just like Heather said, it, it is the gift of time and it's time to develop and to grow so that children are ready then to enter into kindergarten and continue as successful uh, learners. So TK does prepare children for kindergarten. Um, there is much data uh, that, well, I shouldn't say much. It's, we have solid data 
uh, with TK being so new, we're not going to find as much as we would on some other areas. But the American um, Institute for Research, AIR, uh, has done the most. Um, they just completed in 2017 a five-year study um, that showed some of the results that we'll look at on a slide here in a few moments, showing that indeed for these younger children who do attend uh, TK, that they do have significant growth and certainly are ready uh, as they enter the second year of kindergarten, which we call our, our regular kind of typical kindergarten that we've known forever. Like Heather said, it's two years now. It's TK and then it's kindergarten. Um, one thing that is true, uh, the most success, of course, comes from a program that is high quality. And we'll have a chance, um, if not tonight, over time to share more of that with you. What does high quality look like? Um, what are some of the professional development pieces that are going to help support that and to support our, our teachers? And I just want to assure you, families, you are in good hands here. Uh, I love working with San Gabriel. I feel very blessed and fortunate. And I know that um, the programs here, I feel like I'm part of the family. So I'll say our programs um, are going Going to be of highest quality and you can rest assured that your child's getting what they need. One thing that you will see um, as we think about uh, children and how they learn, how they grow, how they develop, it is about the whole child um, as Heather mentioned too. And when we look at uh, a child's environment, you'll be able to, to visit and to be able to see offhand some differences. Uh, we consider the environment the third teacher. Uh, there's a lot that can happen to support young children there. And um, the social emotional skills are, are, are really the basis for all learning that happens in a transitional kindergarten classroom, in a preschool classroom, and really in a lot of ways should be in all of our classrooms, but especially with our younger children. Um, if a child is struggling with trauma, if a child is not confident, if a child um, has difficulty making decisions and self-regulating, that's going to impact their learning. And so we are really committed to making sure that children are safe, that internal safe as well as external, but right now we're talking the social emotional, and that they learn skills of how to make good choices, how to self-regulate, how to cope and how to build relationships. And those are those are skills that will last forever. Um, so we, we look forward to that opportunity. And then um, again, as I said before, there is research that um, shows that children's language development is hugely supported when they receive TK. You want to go to the next slide, Heather? I think it's the one that, yeah. So let me just show you this real quickly. This is part of the study that uh, occurred, uh, the five-year study, and the results came out in 2017. And there's another one that's currently underway. Um, but bottom line here is that the children who attended TK versus those who didn't um, are young children, that there was a higher result in their um, their literacy, their pre-literacy, and their early mathematics. Uh, there were also some other areas, but these were really the two that, that showed forth as being very, very powerful. Um, as you look at the literacy piece, there's um, letter identification, word identification, phonological awareness. Those are huge. Uh, the quantitative concepts of math, that problem solving and uh, you know applied problems, those pieces too, um, children really do have a head start. As Jim said, um, they're they're ready and um, equipped. So it's really good to get that data. It's easy to say gut level or in the classroom. I know this is working, but to really see it that the data has been collected and shows. Um, the growth and the growth over time. And if we went back and looked at a previous study, we'd see that the growth is consistent, very consistent. So um, again, that's very telling to us as we continue to look at our programming, look at our instruction, look at how we're working with our, our young children. So as we talk about a high quality program, knowing that it can support young children, we're going to make sure that happens. All right, well, the next piece. Um, in order to be able to support this good work, um, the California Department of Education, of course, has expectations from us. 
and we um, are required to send to them a plan, which is wonderful. <laughs> uh, we want to make sure that that we are doing what is best for our young children. And so these are the areas that the, the state will be looking at and that we've been writing to. And let me go back and say that one thing I can truly say that's really been a gift to all of us is the collaborative piece that has gone into writing uh, the plan. I love how we have had meetings and community members and staff members and early educators and LA County Office of Ed and other Southern California uh, educators and practitioners um, have had a chance to be able to give input. So it's not just the district office are sitting down and just writing a plan about what we think, even though we are looking at pieces that are research-based, but we've also valued the voices of others in the field, and that's been huge. Um, you'll, you'll hear in a few minutes the California vision for TK. Well, as we have thought about that, you know, in light of thinking of our district vision, you know, what is that? What does that look like? And that coherence as we come together. Um, so in bringing our community folk together and having uh, regular meetings and being able to really form um, a vision that's based on beliefs and research and what we know about young ch children has just been a great opportunity. And you'll get to hear that vision that um, we have all worked on and, and put together in just a few minutes. Another area is community engagement and partnerships. Again, um, how are we reaching out to the community? How are we aligning what we, we do individually to come together collectively for the sake of young children? So the engagement and partnerships are just huge. Um, and I think at some point, uh, family members, if you'd like to get involved uh, as well, because you certainly are in our community. Uh, we would love to hear from you because we too believe that your voice matters. You are a child's first educator. And so to partner with you um, is really a great opportunity for all of us. And then the workforce uh, recruitment and uh, professional learning. Um, as we're writing the plan, we are uh, talking about projected numbers of children who will come and be in our TK program. So therefore we are looking forward to making sure we secure enough teachers as well. So we're in the process uh, of working on that and then they will have training. We have um, quite a heavy uh, training schedule. Um, and when I say heavy, I don't mean a burden. I mean heavy in terms of its goodness, of its um, research-basedness, of it being able to really equip teachers for that good work with children and their, their families. So we have a lot that we are just ready to get, to get going on and to get started so that as that new year comes, we're ready for the kiddos to walk into our classrooms and be able to meet, greet them, and have that community where they belong. So um, with curriculum, instruction, assessment, we also have to write to that. Um, you'll be hearing more uh, at another time about what that is. Uh, we have our uh, learning foundations that we will be using for children that are four to five years old, but you're gonna hear more and more about a continuum of learning, about a preschool through third grade and even beyond. But for us, looking at preschool through third grade and how is it that we as teachers, we align? I mean, it, here's a continuum of learning that is aligned. So how is it then we align what we're doing with children? So there's really a seamless type of um, connection and learning that happens in their lives. So we're excited, believe that this, this is the time. Um, I, I keep saying to teachers, if you're in early education, this is your time. Children coming into transitional kindergarten right now, this is your time. And so there's just so many wonderful opportunities that we are looking forward to. And then the last area is also an area that we have to um, provide information about. Um, and just very quickly looking at our facilities, our services, and what it is that we have to offer. There are guidelines that are given, and those guidelines by the state really do focus on safety of children. It talks. It, it also talks about, and we work on that space that's needed for active learning. And so there, there are many pieces that go into that, and um, 
my goodness, it was a few months ago that uh, we even took a tour to the different sites. So that's that good work has started as well. So you can look and see these are the areas that the plan really revolves around. So we're being very thoughtful and very um, intentional, knowing that, that the good work is so important. Thank you so much, Sheila. We so appreciate the overview of all the work that we're going to be doing. And we did want to just share with you something that had been created by our advisory committee, so which was the rough vision of our TK program. We took the California vision for TK, and I won't read that to you, but it's the big bucket, a big vision they have for California. And we align that with the district vision North Star piece of our portrait of a graduate where we are trying in our journey with our students to create creative thinkers, collaborators, global citizens who are empathetic, who are communicators and who are resilient. And that doesn't start in high school and that doesn't start in middle school and that doesn't even start in elementary school. It is now gonna begin in TK. So that being said, our advisory group came up with the following, did a lot of activities and prototyping and drafts and came up with the following. The San Gabriel Unified School District, Transitional Kindergarten Program believes in providing a strong foundation for early learning and preparation for school readiness for all students. In partnership with families, SUSD will provide a program founded in purposeful play and appropriate learning opportunities that engage the whole child, creating curiosity and joy in the learning process. And there were keywords there that every single educational partner wanted in our vision, joy, curiosity, all students. Those are things that were highlighted throughout our uh, vision creation process. So a lot of you might be looking at, um, at this program and wondering what it's actually going to be like once we get started. We've heard a lot about the background tonight. So here are a few important nuts and bolts about what we will be offering in the 2022-23 school year. First of all, each site, each elementary site in San Gabriel Unified will have a transitional kindergarten or TK. In addition to TK at each elementary site, the students that are enrolled in TK will have opportunities to have before and after school services. Um, they are gonna be um, flushed out and planned with our partners, Options for Learning, who are here with us tonight. We don't have all of the details of that, but it is a part of the state's expectation to provide before and after school services for a possible total of nine hours. For those who don't wish to have their children um, participate in the extended learning day, that's fine too. The regular kindergarten day is the same length as the TK. So it'll be a regular full school day for transitional kindergartners in 2022-23. Um, and right now we are in the active phase of preparing our campuses to receive um, transitional kindergartners with these new expectations and program standards. Um, things that we're working on, drop off and pick up near classrooms, appropriate size bathrooms that are nearby, because we know that's a crucial thing when your kids are little and just working on that independently, um, developmentally appropriate transitional kindergarten play areas, and lunch spaces that are the right size and the right configuration for little transitional kindergartners. Next slide. Uh, you may be wondering about the size of the class. That's something that I remember wondering about a lot when my, uh, when my own child was getting ready to go to school. Um, are they gonna get enough tension? What will be the ratio? So right now we're looking at beginning with a ratio of 12 children to one adult in the classroom for probably um, a theoretical 24 students in a classroom with one teacher who's fully credentialed and one instructional aide as the other adult. Um, and over time, that ratio will be brought down to something closer to 10 to 1 that, that comes with um, funding that phases in uh, throughout the school years. And uh, again, a full day, 
with extended day options. Um, and it's important to know that the extended day opportunities will be provided free of cost to those who, um, who need that support. And then there'll be a sliding scale for those who are able to contribute to the extra surround hours um, for the total of nine hours. And again, that's optional, that's not required. And we've heard a little bit about our community engagement um, and partnerships as we've been planning this with our action committee. Um, here is a list of all the partners that we continue to work with, those um, who are able to join us with our UTK action planning team, and also those who are able to provide input and feedback on this um, important step in our development in Singapore Unified Services for early childhood. Um, but maybe aren't necessarily a formal regular participating member uh, with our action planning committee and they're up on the screen for you to take a look at. I think notably um, there's rep representation at all of our sites and at our district level community partner um, uh, teams as well. That's me. All right, so as uh, Superintendent Simmons mentioned, I am the direct, I'm Ruth Essel, I'm the Director of Student Support and Assessment. And so just some clarifying information about how to enroll or sign your child up for transitional kindergarten, or as we call it, TK. The state has officially extended the deadline. So if your child turns five by February 2nd, 2023, your child can enroll and they are considered just a regular child in our district. So I know it sounds, has all these buzzwords and makes it sound all fancy, but it's just enrolling and you can do that right now. And I'm gonna show you in a moment where families whose children fall, fall in this zone turning five by February 2nd, I'll show you exactly where you can enroll. It's not a separate TK enrollment spot. It's where all children who are enrolling in San Gabriel Unified, this is where their families go to enroll them for school for the 22-23 school year. So what is happening is that the state has created this gray zone essentially, where you don't have to accept a student, but you can accept a student. And those are students who turn five up until the end of June, June 30th. So July 1st doesn't count. So on, on at the end of June, if you have a student who's turned five by then, then we, we will consider being able to accept your child for TK. So for that one, we have a separate, it's just a Google form online. And what's happening is that we right now, our window is open for families to fill out that application. Uh, that application starting on May 2nd, sorry, on May 3rd, we will pull all the names out of this early TK application. It is not enrolling, it is an application. It's letting us know that you would like to have a spot for your child and your child turns five after February 2nd and before July 1st, right? So it's this special window. And so what we will do in San Gabriel is we have to see how many spots we have. And then based on the openings that we have, we will look at these factors, the age of the child, and obviously the older ones have, will have preference, siblings already enrolled in our district, uh, the date that the form was filled out, and of course, space available. So the form has been available at our website for some time, including before uh, March 28th. But March 28th is the earliest date that we will, um, when, it, when we rank the dates that people have filled it out, the earliest date we, we will recognize is March um, 28th. So don't, don't panic if you applied on March 28th. All right, so I am going, oh, and then the last bullet is that we are accepting students from other, if you, um, if you live in a different district, um, and you are interested in our early TK application, then you can go ahead and fill out this application. If you're accepted, then families need to be released from their what's called their home district. So if you live somewhere else, you need to be released and then apply to come into San Gabriel Unified. So Heather, if you want me to show- uh, Yep, website, I'm gonna stop sharing right now and I'm gonna give you, um, let's see who can share. There we go. There you go. And All right. When you're so done, here is the San Gabriel Unified School District website. And 
for me, everything is through student support. So I'm going to just funnel you through there. That's student support. Under student su support, here is the click here to enroll in San Gabriel Unified School District for 22-23. And when you click there, there it is. There's the online enrollment. And again, this is uh, the same for all students who are enrolling for next year. If you scroll down a little bit more here, it says transitional kindergarten. And it says families who want to enroll a young TK may apply at the website. And here we are, transitional kindergarten application. This is the early entrance transitional kindergarten application. So it's just a Google form, but it lets us know that you are interested. I'm gonna stop sharing. It lets us know that you're interested and your name will be included in this process starting on, I mean, it closes May 2nd. So we're gonna start looking at names on May 3rd. Um, so just big picture. So where we are is at step mode number one, you're gonna figure out if you're just enrolling or if you're going to be filling out the Google form to let us know you're interested. Um, and that's step number two, you're enrolling your, your child. If you are actually enrolling, you your child turns five by February 2nd, then you can enroll right now. The office managers, where I'm on step number three, office managers will work with you to finish the, complete that process, maybe ask you for a little bit more documentation, and then you enjoy your summer. Uh, families who then get accepted into early TK will be contacted, and they'll go that through that same process. They'll enroll, they'll work with an office manager, enjoy their summer. After summer, we do something called data confirmation, and that start, that's on August 1st critical because it's what connects us to our families. More about that later. There is a TK kindergarten orientation date to be announced. And the first day of school, this seems so far away from now, but the first day of school, August 17th, 2022. And that's it for me, Heather. Fantastic. Well, guess what? That's it. We are now at our Q&A with our wonderful and patient panel who have been sitting here and attentive this whole time. So Jim, I'm gonna give it to you and I'm gonna see if we have any questions, uh, but uh, part, uh, attendees, this is your opportunity to ask questions in our Q&A um, and we will try to answer to the best of our ability. But there don't seem to be questions. <laughs> <laughs> so thinking oh, through the lens of a parent. Sorry, getting, Jim, go on. <laughs> we're getting some questions now. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Our first question is, what is considered a full day? So do I have uh, a panelist that can answer that question? So I did the research today and I have the total number of minutes that our kindergartners go to school, but perhaps one of our principals can tell us what that looks like in real life. What time does a kindergarten student or a TK, if you have it at your site already, student come to school and what time do they leave right now? Because that will be the same full day that our children will experience in 22-23. Yeah, I can take that. This is Yvonne from Wilson um, and it's pretty, uh, it's the same across um, all elementary. So. Students um, can arrive to campus as early as eight o'clock. And um, some do arrive a little earlier at some of the campuses who participate in the options um, childcare uh, before school. Uh, classes start at 8.30. However, I just caught myself because next year is an early start. So let's rewind that about 30 minutes. So the students will need to start school at eight and then they will be out at 1.50, 1.50. Um, principals, did I get 150 correct? Um, and so typically, like if we're talking about this year, it's 8.30 to 2.10. So next year we'll be pushed back 30 minutes. So um, I hope that answered your question. And they follow the same schedule pretty much. They have um, a, a bit of earlier lunch than, than, than our kindergartners, but they do follow the same you know, pattern as lunch and they'll go to lunch first and, and, some, um, you know, and then they play. So, um, but they, they very much follow the, the schedule of the kindergarten. Thank you, Yvonne. Great question and great answer. Okay, next question. 
Very important. Do they have to be diaper trained? And Sheila, maybe you could help us out. I think you've got so much experience in this. You could help us with this question. Oh, yes. They need to be diaper trained. I mean, they need to not, you know, wear diapers. Yes. <laughs> okay. That was an easy answer. <laughs> but yeah, we, we want them uh, ready to go and being able to use bathroom facilities independently, even though we'll oversee them. Thank you. Okay, if we have a young TK, should we register the students early on? And that's Ruth right. Eslin, that yeah. sounds like a question for you. Yeah, so if you, are an, if you have an early TK student in your home, meaning that they turn five at next year, right? They're turning five after February 2nd, but before July 1st, then right now I would go to the district website and fill out the Google form, the early TK form. You will be notified after May 3rd if there is room for your child. And then we will help you through the process of enrolling. Great, great question. Great answer. And maybe you could stick on for this, this next one. Uh, Ruth, is there an issue if I already did both enrollment forms for a younger TK student? And if they if it's an issue if they already filled out the Google form? Yes, for a for a younger TK student. Then they, they are set. They just need to hold tight because we won't look just to be fair, right? We care about being fair and equitable. So all of those applications will be looked at on May 3rd. Great. And next question, do you have to apply for before and after school care or extended mm -hmm. care? And maybe I'll call on one of our options surround care to help us out with, with that answer. Hi, I'm Rosemary Lachea Heaslop and I'm the director of the options surround care program. Uh, we're happy to be here in partnership with the district. We've been on the campuses for the school age program since 1997. And we do need uh, families to register. They can get on a waiting list now if they state that they're gonna be enrolling in the TK. Typically we do serve kindergartners and TKs at some schools. And now as it's branching out, we'll make sure that we take a look at that website. Um, but they can get on a waiting list now. We serve full cost and subsidized families that might qualify for a sliding scale. Um, and then we will be working with the district on a possible partnership as well. Thank you, Rosemary. And, and maybe you could help us out with this next question. I think maybe they have options, surround care and options enrichment mixed up on this question. See if I'm right here. How to enroll for the options how do we enroll for options since the option website only shows K through eight? Are they referring to the options enrichment program? Correct. There are many, many programs on the district uh, sites and campuses. And so some of them are for the younger children and some of them are for the enrichment program, which is at Jefferson right now. And so that's a middle school program and also at some of the other elementaries. Option surround care is the before and after school and it operates year round. So whenever there is no school going on, that's when we're open. Option surround care is only closed nine days out of the year. So we're a year round program. So when there is no school, we're open for spring break, winter break, summer program. And, um, and the enrichment program is only open during school time. And Jim, if, if I will add, um, for the parents who are interested in enrolling or inquiring more about options program, whether it's before and after school or extended care for the TK kids, uh, Rose, is it okay if we leave your number? So then that way they call you and- um, Sure, that's a, not a problem. Okay, you know, and then if, and if it's a preschool service, then uh, she will refer them to, to us, but we just, want to make sure that um, once the, the families are enrolled in the district, that we get them the right information about how to enroll for extended care or before and after school. And our website is www.optionsforlearningfor.org. 
Thank you so much. And thank you for being here. I, I, mm -hmm. I knew there'd be some questions that would pop up. And I'm just so thrilled to be uh, teaming up with our Options Surround Care. This is just a really unique opportunity for our students. So thank you so much uh, to you both. Um, okay, do they have nap time? Now, I know when I went to kindergarten, but I don't think there was TK back there. There was nap time back in those days. And it, actually, it was one of my favorite parts, but I don't think we do that anymore. Do we, Sheila? <laughs> no. Um, no, teachers may think they need a nap too uh, after they've worked with active children all day, but there, no, no napping in TK at this point. And if we hear anything that changes, we'll certainly let you know on that. And we have another question in at, that came in from the chat. Just wanted to make sure we didn't miss that. Um, from Jeremy, how many TK classes will there be at each site? Mm. Don't everybody answer at once. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll, I'll jump into that one. So right now we have, uh, uh, TKs at, at most of our sites, um, except for Coolidge right now. And we will be offering uh, a class there at Coolidge and this will depend upon uh, enrollment. So we're, we're hoping it looks like we'll ha have an additional TK at every site, but some of this will be depending upon um, how many students uh, sign up for the program. So it's still a work in progress, but a great question. And also, may I jump sure in there, one. Mr. Simmons? Oh, yes, yes, Mr. Wynn. Uh, and sorry I didn't introduce you. This is our amazing principal at McKinley Elementary, uh, Mr. Tui Wynn. Hi, Tui. Thank you, Jim. And also, uh, just wanted to add that we will be offering a Spanish dual immersion TK at McKinley Elementary. Very exciting. Jim, if I could just jump in, just, just to be super clear, Next year, there is at least one TK class at each elementary school. Yes. That's different. This year, every there's a TK at each elementary school, but not Coolidge. So next year, we are adding a, a class at Coolidge so that all five have an, a TK class. Right. And possibly additional ones, depending upon enrollment, as well as the additional um, TK at McKinley with the dual immersion is, as Mr. Wynn explained. So thank you for clarifying that, Ruth. And Jim, can you, we had a request in the chat just right now. Can we please repeat the Coolidge information one more time? Yes, and I think Ruth just touched upon that right now. We do not have TK there this year. There will be a TK class there next year. And I see a, another question that came in. If we started enrollment and was told we needed to select another school, who should we talk to? And I think that would be you, Ruth, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was reading in the chat one of the other questions that got missed from somebody, DB. Can you repeat it one more time, Jim? Yes. If we started enrollment and was told we needed to select another school, who should we talk to? Okay, so if that already happened, right? So I don't know if it's something that already happened or they're like anticipating it might happen to them conditionally, right? So if somebody went through enroll enrollment right now and, and they, they, um, they said they wanted to go one of our elementary schools and they were told you don't live in that neighborhood, right? So that's what's called an intra, I-N-T-R-A, intra district request meaning that you're requesting to go from one elementary school to a different elementary school within the San Gabriel Unified School District. That application is at our website. It has the same timeline as the early TK. It opened March 28th and, and it will close and it really, really closes on May 2nd. And so families that want to use an intra-district request need to fill out the Google form. Again, it's intra, I-N-T-R-A. Um, if they do not fill out that application by May 2nd, they will not be considered. It's a very, it's a hard deadline. And, and so, it, it, and that may happen right in the future. Anyway, 
So then I just want to be super clear. There's two kinds of permits that really mess people up, right? They get them confused. Intra, I-N-T-R-A, is when families want to move between elementary schools within our district. Inter, I-N-T-E-R, are families that want to move from one district to a different district. And so just be careful when you go to the website that you pick the one that it, you know, meets what you need. Great, thank, thank you so much, Ruth. Okay, our next question, if a child has a language delay, will that be an issue and what kind of supportive measures are offered in that case? And Aaron Ortiz, our Director of Special Education is here. I'm glad you're here. Aaron, could you help us with that question? Sure, of course. And so each of our elementary schools does have the support of a speech and language pathologist. So depending on whatever goals or a plan that your child might have, if they already have a plan in place, or maybe they don't have a school-based plan just yet, we do have the support staff to be able to support our students with language delays. Great, thank you. Great question, great answer. Um, and I see we've got one in the chat here. Um, will the intra-district requests also be processed at the same time as the May 3rd date? Yes, okay. Yeah, and that's a classic example where uh, siblings would be taken into consideration. Excellent. And another great question here, is there any Mandarin dual language immersion for TK? Not at this time, uh, maybe down the line sometime, we're exploring that possibility, um, but not at this time. Can I jump back real quick to DB's question about the 12 to one ratio per adult? Okay, so um, the question is, is the 12 to one ratio only for TK or will this ratio affect the class size for other primary grades from kinder to third grade? This is, this is for TK. Um, the other class sizes and ratios have already been established. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you for clarifying that, Mr. Fang. That, that's actually part of the legislation for uh, the new universal TK. Do we see any other questions there, Heather? No other questions, but if you do have questions, da, 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 <laughs> Ms. Calhoun is the one to talk to. I'm the collector of questions and I don't always have all the answers, but I have this wonderful collaborative environment to work in. And if I don't know the answer, I will find a person who can get us the correct answer and get the information to you directly. So please uh, reach out to me. Um, and here is my website information, if you, um, my email rather, but if you look on the website, you can also see my phone number at the district office. And I'm just really um, glad to support you I think that the questions that you ask often promote us to think about things in a new and different way and sometimes to revisit things that maybe perhaps we had thought was clear were clear in the past and, and could use a little bit of um, clarification and a, a second look. So thank you, please, there's no dumb question. Send it all to me and I will work hard to get the responses back to you in a timely manner. And as we say goodbye this evening, we just want you to know here in San Gabriel Unified how how lucky and privileged we are to be starting this journey with your child. And we appreciate all of our families in San Gabriel Unified. Uh, you will not find a more loving place than this district. I agree with you there, Heather. And thank you for being a wonderful moderator tonight uh, and leading this panel. Uh, thank you to all of our panelists. You are an amazing team to work with. I appreciate all of your work on this program. Thank you, parents. Um, we're excited about having you join our San Gabriel Unified family. And, and like we said, we're available for questions. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And we look forward to meeting with you and, and seeing your little ones join our district. So thank you all and have a wonderful evening. And thank you, liaisons. Yes, thank you, liaisons. <laughs> have a good evening, everybody. Thank you.
Don't forget to stop recording. I'm trying.